Thank you. Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, atomic fire deposition. Uh, more specifically, what we're going to talk about is uh, what it is, um, the history of how it was developed, um, uh, the process, and how we describe how uh, uh, they're, they use it and how uh, uh, monolayers grow, uh, the types of uh, atomic fire deposition for certain uh, circumstances of uh, processing, uh, the types of reactors they use, and uh, some new technologies that we see today in this industry. Uh, Atomic layer deposition uh, is a method for uh, uh, developing uh, thin layers for uh, uh, the semiconductor business. Uh, and when they use it in the semiconductor business, they uh, use it in uh, microelectronic processors uh, uh, so they can have uh, high control of electric current and uh, high di dielectric layers. Uh, Atomic layer deposition was first uh, discovered uh, in the 70s, uh, 30 years ago, um, by Dr. Tumo Fantoma. Uh, he was developing an electroluminescent uh, display. Uh, it's actually currently in uh, uh, Finland's uh, airport. He's a Finnish doctor. But really, uh, the developments in atomic layer deposition uh, haven't been made until uh, the semiconductor industry uh, took over uh, because uh, creating a, a material that can uh, have extreme control uh, for electric currents is uh, really needed for uh, processors. Uh, atomic layer deposition is very uh, fundamental uh, uh, chemistry-wise, very fun fundamental pr principle. It works off of the principle of adsorption which is the adhesion between uh, atoms and molecules, uh, or gases and solids. Um, and it allows the, ga the gas particles, when they're introduced to a solid, to bond to the surface of the solid. And when the, the, the gas particles are, on, are formed onto the solid particles, they become new solid particles, as seen in the picture. But what makes... Uh, Atomic fire deposition unique is the pulse purge process. Uh, so we have a series of uh, pulses and purges where uh, it's described in ACBD, a, uh, where the A and B are two different reactants and C and D are inert uh, purge gases. Um, a is introduced and then it, it is purged. Uh, a is, is the, uh, the, the, uh, the deposition gas, so they introduce it they evacuate it after the deposition is done to create a new monolayer, and they repeat the process with the second, with the second uh, gas and then evacuate it to create a whole uh, new layer and a new uh, formation. And they repeat these processes over and over again. As uh, seen in this picture, uh, we have uh, the first precursor pulse, which is uh, our initial uh, uh, dosage, uh, which introduces the, the molecule onto the substrate. And then we have uh, a, a, a purge, which uh, removes the excess uh, uh, first precursor pulse, and then it puts it on to, and then it gets rid of that, and then allows for a, a new uh, a, a vacuum, a, a vacuum in it, a vacuum of, uh, of the substrate. And then you have an additional uh, second pulse or precursor pulse, and then it's put on top of the existing one to create a new new layer. And then this is a Redone over and over and over again until they grow uh, the layers. Uh, the pulse purge processes uh, allow uh, your results to be very, very consistent uh, and very conformal layers, uh, some very high control. Um, and this is a lot different than uh, chemical vapor deposition, which is a whole different type of uh, vapor deposition where, where it doesn't use the pulse purge process and it doesn't create uh, conformal layers. Uh, it's a whole other study, uh, but those are the two uh, main uh, types of deposition that they use. 
um, the, the, the pulse purge and the atomic layer deposition, uh, they're uh, a lot more uh, efficient and warm and formal than uh, the chemical vapor. Next, we're going to talk about the nucleation, uh, how the, uh, the, the layers grow through the processes, all the, pur all the purges and the pulses. Um, they're described in uh, growth per cycle, which is usually angstroms per cycle. Uh, they can be a little different depending on the molecule. Next, we're going to the more, uh, more in depth of the, uh, the, uh, the nucleation is the, the type of growth and the type of growth modes. Uh, we have the first uh, Van, der, Van der Moer growth, the Vollmer Weber growth, the Stransky Krasnov growth, and those are the three types of growth. And uh, each one is used for their specific abilities to uh, transport, uh, uh, to conduct electricity. Uh, first one we'll talk about is the Frank Van der Moer growth. Um, it's when uh, Absor absorption forces are strongest between the molecule and the existing monolayer or the, the substrate. So every, all the molecules are uh, attracted to the very, very uh, uh, the existing substrate. Um, so they create a very, very uh, conformal layer uh, as opposed to the next one, which is the Balmer Weber growth, which is uh, between intermolecular pulse and inter intermolecular forces are a lot stronger. Than they, so you create a lot of uh, Clumping uh, pyramids and uh, uh, yeah, a lot of, a lot of uh, islands they form. And the next one is a combination of both. Um, we have uh, uh, um, intermolecular forces as strong as they are uh, to the existing substrate. So we have a very uh, combined uh, effect. And each one of those growth modes is used to uh, produce a specific type of uh, uh, electric uh, flow. And then we turn, we're going to talk about the, uh, the model reaction process. Uh, this is uh, the reaction that they use to explain the chemical, uh, chemical properties and the, how the equation, how the, the chemicals work um, for most of them. Uh, this is a very uh, Highly studied uh, reaction for atomic layer deposition. Um, it's, a, it's exothermic, um, and it has proven to uh, have consistent densities and consistent results. Here's the equation: uh, hydroxide on a uh, TMA tetramethyl uh, among, uh, aluminum. Um, the uh, hydrox, yeah, the hydroxide. Uh, is, uh, there's supposed to be an asterisk, as you see right there. Uh, it's, it's bonded to the, uh, the existing substrate, and you're introducing the gaseous uh, aluminum, or TMA, uh, which then it, uh, forms onto the, uh, the oxygen, uh, creating an, uh, an aluminum uh, layer, and uh, exer exerting a, a methane, which is then uh, evacuated. That is the first process as in pulse A. Uh, pulse process B is in pulse B. Uh, you have an existing uh, aluminum layer which is bonded on top of the substrate, which is introduced to water, uh, which then creates uh, aluminum, hydroxide, and methane, which, which is your, uh, your aluminum hydroxide is your deposited layer, which then you can redo the whole entire process. And CH4 is again, Evacuating. Uh, there are three types of atomic layer deposition. Uh, each one is used to uh, get the deposition of uh, a certain uh, a certain uh, molecule or uh, atom. Some of them don't like to deposit. Thermal atomic layer deposition is used, is used for uh, deposition of uh, uh, metals that or any any uh, atom that doesn't. React at room temperature, so they have to increase the temperatures to get things to deposit. Uh, plasma is when they have a monotonic <coughs> or single atoms that they use to uh, bond together, um, and they use plasma 
because they don't normally want to bond. And this is a, a, a medium that lets them stick together to then form on, on a, a deposited layer or a, a, a substrate. Next we're going to talk about uh, polymer MLD. Uh, instead of ALD, atomic layer deposition is a monolayer, de monolayer uh, molecular layer deposition. Um, they use it to uh, create uh, organic polymer films on uh, and it uses the same exact principles uh, where you have an existing and you introduce a new one to create a new form, uh, a, new, uh, a new substrate, and then you evacuate it. Uh, it's just with the use of polymers, which is a, a, a part or a fraction of an existing uh, molecule. Next, we're going to talk about uh, atomic layer deposition reactors. Um, when you're talking about reactors, the number one priority is safety. Um, and in addition, when you're talking about uh, atomic layer deposition, there are so many uh, specified designs for uh, uh, for what the, the company needs. So each one is designed uniquely, um, but they all are based off the same principles. Uh, first, we have the throttling reactor, which is the uh, older older version of the uh, uh, atomic layer deposition reactor. Um, that was first used by Dr. Tumo Santola. Uh, you get a, a big reactor and you force your reactions to half by pumping on the, 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 per, the, the pulse gas, uh, pulse A, and you just pump it on there until you force the reactions and when everything is deposited, uh, you open the reactor and you uh, it, it, uh, evacuate it. Um, but with the inefficiency for uh, the, the existing gas to uh, evacuate, it takes a long time. But the newest, uh, the newest what they use today, they've been using it for quite a while, um, is the viscous flow reactor. Uh, they use a uh, viscous uh, a gas to uh, transport the the, uh, the pulse pulse A. Uh, to, to be to be deposited, and then they use it uh, when they're not when they're not reacting in the excess. It's then put into the uh, viscous uh, gas, and then uh, and then evacuated. Uh, this is a lot more efficient, uh, a lot more highly used today. Uh, today we see a lot of uh, innovations in, atom in atomic fire deposition. Uh, Intel uses this quite a bit. Uh, because uh, they need a, a, a lot more quality control, higher gas flow control, uh, a lot more efficient production, and a lot more pr uh, production effectiveness. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the diaphragm valve, which is a new valve that they use to uh, uh, to deposit ex at extreme rates, so like uh, milliseconds. You're talking about this deposition happens, so we can get things to happen a lot, a lot faster. And this is actually a very new. Uh, it works off the, uh, the velocity of the cir circle being higher on the outside than it is on the inside. So if you put your chambers on the outside, uh, you can deposit them uh, faster if you if you spin the inside of the, the, the circle faster. So um, usually they use these to put on plastics, as you see, as a wrapping around. Um, but this uses a, a physics to maximize to maximize the uh, deposition rates. Uh, today we went over uh, atomic fire deposition. So actually, it's a relatively new field of study in the last 30 years. Uh, it's going to keep growing, and I think it's going to be very uh, uh, beneficial to uh, processing powers and what we have today. Thank you. Completely surpass chemical vapor deposition, or is CBD still used? Um, it's used uh, differently. Uh, atomic layer deposition is for high controls. Uh, <coughs> chemical vapor is used more for like uh, just depositing on like glasses, things that don't need to necessarily be uh, uh, at extreme control, so like the Teflon coating.